Hi, um, welcome to my channel, Uncle Matt. And just want <laughs> I just want to just thank you guys for watching. And today, this week, the video is actually with a special guest here. This may shock most of you that know me that I actually have a friend. No, Aww. this is my friend. This is my friend Sarah. That's actually my and our friend. She has a daughter. And she's an expat living here in Jalapa, and she's from Texas. So I just want to give um, the people that are turning, tuning in to this week's video a little bit about who she is, why she came to Mexico. She speaks and writes Spanish um, just as well as English. And so this is our friend Sarah. So go ahead, Sarah. You can explain who you are, where you're from, um, and how you got down here in, in Mexico. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah, and I am originally from Waco, Texas. Uh, I went to college in Indiana, and they had an exchange program, well, like a study abroad program. And one of the places to study abroad was Jalapa. So I came down here back in 2002 as a student uh, and learned Spanish and studied here at the Universidad Veracruzana, mostly in sociology and, and anthropology. And I just loved Mexico and I met my, uh, my daughter's father as well. And so I fell in love with the country and with a person. And <laughs> so I went back to, to finish my, my university uh, and then came right back down here to to Mexico. We lived in, in Querétaro, which is in this right smack in the middle of the country uh, for about six years. And I taught English there for a while as well as high school, uh, mostly social science classes there. Then in 2011, we moved back here to Jalapa and uh, well, I've been here, been here ever since. Okay, so um, my our friend here, Sarah, is a writer. Um, you, she writes for the Mexican um, Daily News. So tell us a little bit about your job and how you found that and how you like it. Oh, well, I just wanted, you know, I had been teaching English online for a long time to make a living, and I did not want to do that anymore. And I really liked to write, so I thought, well, what do I know a lot about? I know a lot about Mexico in English. <laughs> so I, I had known about this, uh, this paper, Mexico News Daily, for a while. And I just decided to send a, an email to the editor and say, hey, what do you have to do to, to write for you? And he said, well, I mean, send me a sample of your work if you want to. I, I remember he said, honestly, most people do not write well enough to... <laughs> To, to actually write an article or something, but you know, send me an, a sample if you want. So I did, and he liked it, and so, so now I've been writing a, a weekly uh, opinion column for every every week for the past few years. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> it's kind of interesting how I actually met um, Sarah. For those that many of you really don't know my story um, with um, how I found Monsi, uh, Monsi um, has been my girlfriend now for three years. We met on Facebook and we went um, met in person for the first time in Tijuana. And she happened to be from Jalapa. And uh, my first time down here in Jalapa visiting uh, Monsi, I wanted to see what is there that we can have. She has a, uh, at that time, it was um, a 13 year old daughter. Um, what can we do for fun in Jalapa? So I'm looking under YouTube and there's not very many videos of um, Jalapa at the time, and I happened to run across uh, Sarah being interviewed in one. I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe I can find her on Facebook. So I sent her a message, and we become friends for almost going on two years now. And there's a lot of things here that Jalapa doesn't have that the United States has, like, such as theme parks and uh, water parks. And so it was kind of like, well, what can we do for fun? So we met, and um, Sarah is a really uh, neat person. Her daughter, Lisa, is um, really cute, um, seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Sarah, as, a, as an American who's been down here for a long time, what are some of the cultural differences you think are, when you say, between Mexico and the United States? Well, let me give you an example. For me, um, time. And this is something Monsi and I have been working on together. When you tell somebody you're going to be there at eight, you expect to be there at eight. Here in Mexico, it's kind of not like that. What do you think? Yeah. 
Yeah, it definitely is not. Unless you're like five hours late, you don't even apologize when you get when you show up late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was probably the old, the, the hardest thing, and still for me to get um, used to. And I guess some of the other cultural difference for me that I um, sometimes like the, the noise in the morning can get mm -hmm. very because in the United States you have codes where you, you can't have noise after or before like eight o'clock or nine o'clock. You hear you have everything going on. The, the gas trucks yeah i mean i think it just boils down to like what things do you think are big deals and what things aren't big deals uh, yeah so so like here you know being on time is not a big deal you know i mean it is yeah. for some people i say yeah. that very generally uh you know a, a lot of ambient noise is not yeah. a big deal uh, but but other things are very big deals, like that that maybe uh, a person from the United States would I guess, like you don't put your feet up on furniture <laughs> or on tables, yeah. like that's disgusting. Yes. Yeah. You don't use it, you don't throw a bath towel on the floor to wipe something up. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, I'm it really is. upset. <laughs> so it just boils down to like, what do you think is a big deal and what isn't a big deal? Like those are the differences. Yeah, and like um, one of the other things that you know, kind of um, shocked me a little bit is like when you go to a restaurant, um, you're wondering when are they going to give us a bill? When are they going to give us a bill? But you actually have to ask for it because it's also a Mex Mexican tradition. Generally, they like to drink their coffee and then chat for a long time afterwards. Where in the United States, it's almost like they just want to get rid of you so they can um, yeah. <laughs> give your table well, away that, to customers. That's why they don't bring you your check here automatically because they don't want you to think that they're trying to chase you out. Right. But then if you, fortunately, you have not had yeah. to go into a hospital for any reason, I don't think, right? Right. But if you go into the hospital for something, like, like if you have some sort of, even if it's a total emergency, unexpected, uh, if it's a private hospital, like you pay your bill in full before you go. Like trying to leave without it is like trying to leave a restaurant without paying your bill. Like you just don't do it. And that's something that a lot of people don't expect. So being yeah. here in Jalapa, as long as you have, what are some of the good things that you like? Um, I'll give you an example. Like for my family, they're really impressed with how inexpensive rent is. Mm -hmm. Well, that's nice, of course. But I, I'm thinking more of uh, like culturally, like yeah. what there is to do. Like, uh, well, Jalapa has a world-class orchestra, world-class. Nice. And I, before the pandemic, I, <laughs> I would go kind of frequently, and I'd actually just started to kind of getting into the habit of going, like, every week, usually. It's right down the road, like, it's at the Uzbi. Like, oh. I live almost, <laughs> like, I live not even a mile from it. So, so I love the orchestra and just the music scene in general, like the, um, the traditional music of this area is called Son Harocho. Like it's usually with the haranas, like those little guitars, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. sometimes a harp, uh, things like that. So, uh, and there, there are parties called bandangos, where it's basically just a, a bunch of people get together and play music and sing and other people dance. And I used to actually take my daughter to uh, to dancing classes for for some harocho for zapateado, and we would she would have her class, and then right after that there was the fandango. So we would stay just watching people sing and dance and play their music and. It was so nice, and I, I really like the art scene here too, like there's a really good art school uh, here in, in Jalapa, so, you know, you can see things like lots of murals and, and yeah, yeah, there, there are museums. Jalapa is a really an attractive city, and probably a lot of Americans do not know where Jalapa is. I sure, I, I didn't know where it was, um, but it is the capital of Veracruz, and it's a very populated city. But I would say the city is more compact. It's area-wise, it's not, but most Mexican cities are very um, compact. Well, it's the, stretching out yeah, a little bit. Yeah, stretching a little bit. And it's kind of like a circular city. This is not one of the easier cities to drive in. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I sometimes joke with people saying, I think they need more speed bumps. Uh... <laughs> um, yeah, speaking of like the art scene, I'm getting used to that. And it's very, very cultural and very friendly people in this town. They also have an archaeological museum. I don't know if you've been oh, there. Oh, yeah. The archaeology museum is also world-class. Like, it's really good. 
Yeah, they, they, it's really I, nice. And Veracruz is kind of the place in Mexico to study anthropology or archaeology. And like, if you're into that kind of thing, this is one of the major, major spots for that. Yeah, the other thing I do like with um, the location of Veracruz, um, I mean, Jalapa in Veracruz, you fly into General Mexico City or the city of Veracruz, but it's usually much longer or sometimes more expensive to fly in and out of Veracruz. Mm -hmm. But the ADO bus lines are great. Um, much, much better than Greyhound. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you're on the Mexican bus lines, it's like, how is the United States so terrible at these buses that they have? Well, I think it's just because it's not a priority in the United yeah. States. Like, people are so used to flying, but... Yeah, and flying in Mexico, I find to be pretty cheap. I know you fly into Houston or mm -hmm. San Antonio. Either one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, now during um, COVID, obviously a lot of things have changed. What was your experience or what did you think Mexico maybe did right or did better than the United States in COVID and things that they just screwed up? Oh, my. <laughs> I mean, what could any of us do, right? Like, it yeah. took us all by surprise. None of us really knew at first right. what would happen or how it would be or what, what everything would look like. But um, I think, it, especially at first, they did a pretty good job at, at staying on top of things. Like, they had uh, this Lopez Gatel, the Secretaria de Salud. Secretario de yes. Salud. Sorry. <laughs> The Dr. Uh, Fauci of um, Mexico. Yeah, the Dr. Fauci of Mexico <laughs> giving his yeah. uh, kind of weekly reports. And so that was good. They closed schools, which I think at the time was the right thing to do. They yes. they, they closed a lot of things. So what, what I think was a mistake was, uh, and what I'm glad that the United States did, and was surprised that the United States did, pleasantly surprised, and I you know, I wouldn't have expected it was uh, was to give economic support like the stimulus yes. uh, program and things. And I really hoped that Mexico would do something similar, and they did not. And now over half of Mexicans have fallen into poverty because if everything's closed and you can't work, like what are you supposed to do? Especially the food vendors and the street vendors. Mm -hmm. um, there's a ton, and they a lot of them get paid daily, and that's their daily. Well, the informal economy is so yeah. big here. Like so many people work in the informal economy, so if you get rid of the informal economy, yeah. like what do you, mm. what do you do? And then the president, kind of like President Trump, really downplayed uh, coronavirus. Like he, he was famous for saying a few kind of silly things, like yeah. oh, this amulet will protect me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was not a uh, mask wearing guy, and. Um... Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe a couple things that uh, at least Sarah lives in a different part of town than where um, um, Monty and I stay. All the like the stores in area stayed open, so I'm not sure about this area, this part of town. Yeah, the stores did because they were considered essential. Yeah, and I didn't see like you know it was, that was another thing that was complicated in the United States and Mexico. What was essential? Starbucks never closed. Many coffee shops never closed, and so. Mm -hmm. But um, I, in some ways, and it depends where you live in the United States, when you had that strict lockdown that you heard about, mm -hmm. I tell people, I'm, in, in, in some ways, I was happier to be here because I never, we never had that lockdown or curfew, maybe alcohol, the banning of yeah, alcohol or something. Yeah, yeah. They restricted the sale of alcohol. Or yeah. But other parts of Mexico yes. had different. There were, there were parts of Mexico that were locked down. You weren't allowed to go to the beach. In fact, the locals would actually roadblock the smaller cities from you even going past i mean yeah. it, there was some pretty crazy stuff that was happening in parts of mexico and um some people thinking that the nurses were purposely giving people covid um i mean the same types of rumors that were going around yeah. in the united states were going around here but i think in some ways and maybe i guess with mexico kind of not and i one thing i did like what amwell did is you were in the united states if you didn't wear a mask um, your, your fights would break out. Here, they don't care. I don't want to say they don't care. They didn't make that a mask mandate. Well, they care, but I mean, it's... Right. You know, I feel like here they're more realistic about how possible it is to control people. Right. Yeah, I know. I think that's a very good point. Uh, and I would say now, especially the smaller cities, I know like my girlfriend's mom is a small, it's a very small town. She said nobody ever wore a mask and a lot of people there didn't even believe in COVID. Here in Jalapa, I would say maybe half. The three quarters of people wear masks, maybe about half now, you know. And with the vaccine rollout here in Mexico, it's been very slow. Um, any idea when you think maybe you can get vaccinated? 
next I don't year? No, they've just started the, the 50 yeah. to 59 age group. Right. Before it was the 60 to 69 age group, and before 70 plus, I think the 70 plus started in February. So it seems to be about a month and a half per group, then a half a month waiting before they start another one. So I'm 39. I might actually be four. I turn 40 in August, so I might actually be 40 by the time. Oh, when they go to 40. We yeah, have yeah. the 40 to 49 age group. I hope yeah. so. But if not, it would probably be late fall before I could get it at the earliest. Yeah, and Mexico pretty much is uh, basically, you can fly into Mexico, they don't check for COVID or anything. Maybe your temperature, I think, at the airport. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Mexico is virtually basically all open. I think, um, I would say, what, maybe since September, things started really opening and they didn't really close back down. And then it seems like January, February, March, everything. Was... It's hard to say because I've been relatively closed down. Yeah. <laughs> So it's hard for me to know what all has been open. Like I remember, you know, Lisa and I went to the mall for the first time mm -hmm. a few months ago. Uh, and like, you know, they take your temperature at the door. Everyone wears masks. There's not a lot of people there. Yeah, I think we've been to the mall a few times and it just all depends what they Like restaurants have been open. That, yeah. the, the thing that scandalizes me is that, you know, I've got a kid who should be in first grade at school, but she's taking online classes now, which her online classes are fine, but for this age group, like the, the benefit of school is being at school with other kids. And I feel like here they've prioritized everything except school. So like the mall's open, restaurants are open, bars are open, everything is open, but the schools are not open. I feel like we should have done the opposite, like prioritized schools made the first things that could be open schools rather than anything else but well anyways for um I, I i think um sarah and i also would agree and everybody it's a very beautiful scenery scenic area around here you got kotepec which is a really small town and famous for coffee mm -hmm. and then hiko um, which has some waterfalls and that's another really small town and it's kind of funny i have to say really small town being from wisconsin milwaukee um, and Madison are the two largest cities. People think that Green Bay is really super huge because they have a football team. Their town, this town is five times bigger than Green Bay population-wise. And so small town in Wisconsin and small town in um, Mexico are completely different. Um, well, the, the population is a lot denser. Like yeah. People live on much smaller plots of land. And um, Mexico does have a very good tollway system. And for those that do drive from the United States into Mexico, if you stay in the tollways, you're fine because it's the police do kind of monitor it. Well, they're great, but they're very expensive. Expensive. It is really expensive. Um, it's when you get off the tollways where you're kind of on your own. Uh, fortunately, Veracruz doesn't have, or Jalapa doesn't have the cartel or the narco. Um, like some of like other parts of Mexico. Maybe Southern Veracruz a little bit. I think we do. Yeah, I think there is some. <laughs> But it's not like Tijuana, or it's not like Sonola, or um, some of the more northern um, counties. But Jalapa has had a history 10, 15 years ago when it was really bad here. Mm -hmm. And that's from what my girlfriend and others have told me. But yeah, I remember that. I think overall, Jalapa, in my opinion, is a very safe town. I've never had any issues. I did have the police actually ask me twice for my passport. And fortunately, both times, for some reason, I had it. And then I find out they're not even allowed to ask you for your passport on the immigration again. Yeah, but what are you, buddy, what are you going to do? You're going to say no? <laughs> Actually, one thing you can do, I have yeah. saved in my phone the emergency number for the U.S. Embassy. Ah. For any yeah. kind of case where people are going to be like, oh, yeah, well, you have to do that. And, you know, <laughs> because then you can just say, okay, yeah. one moment. I just need to let the U.S. Embassy know what's mm -hmm. going on So as a citizen yeah. and... And then finally, it will get down to like a lot of people talk about, hey, what cities in Mexico have the most expats? Well, we're, we're not one of them. But how many would you say Americans, Canadians live in the Jalapa? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't think it's that many because I have not seen that many. I mean, less than 200. Wow, yeah, that's very small. But Jalapa and. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> There's just not a lot of Americans here, and what that does do... I'm thinking about the number of members of the expat groups on, on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> that helps keep the prices kind of low, especially if you're renting houses and 
um, apartments or and the food cost is really relatively cheap there's a lot of videos on mexico and for those that do videos in veracruz you'll see a lot of them say the same thing that it's really inexpensive here very beautiful um gas surprisingly is kind of high and we this is a gas state not the top gas state, I don't think, but one of the gas states. And gas can be when you can do the conversion, right around four seventy-five to five dollars a gallon. Mm, I haven't done the conversion, but it is very expensive. So, but anyways, um, I just want to introduce you to our friend um, Sarah. She's going to be having um, a YouTube channel coming up maybe pretty soon. Uh, maybe. Any, yeah, any future um, endeavors or any artistic things you're going to get involved with, or if somebody wants to get a hold of you. A lot of them. Well, I am I am really easy to get a hold of. It's my name and my face yeah. on Facebook and Instagram. And... Sarah, <laughs> Sarah DeVries. 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 Sarah yeah. DeVries. Yeah, I yeah. have my, um, you want to check on the brownies? And yeah, we got brownies cooking right now while we're doing and this I, video. Oh, but I, I, I'm starting a decor and organization business for home decor and and organization, painting, murals, uh, that type of thing. Uh, that's called Corazón de Tu Casa, and it's just starting to, uh, to get off the ground. Well, that sounds rather exciting, and um, I, I've been, it's been an honor for um, uh, Monsi and I to get to know you um, and, and Lisa and to have fun. No. Uh, and so, um, Anyways, I just wanted to give you, give those that, a different point of view from me talking and the American. And then next week, we're hoping to maybe have a couple more people talk about what the culture, their, what the culture here is like, if they want to come to the United States. These are young kids. And so, anyways, I just want to thank you, everybody, for watching this. And for those that um, have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And, and most importantly, hit that like button, even if you don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> so... Thank you, and anyways, until next time, no. say, say bye. Bye. bye.